Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and today we are doing more adventure design. The players received a rumor that someone was looking around for a lost dwarven city uh, again. <laughs> I uh, ended up reusing a plot hook by accident because I was using a random generator this time and uh, had a little bit too much bourbon while DMing that night, and I needed to give them a different rumor. Uh, so don't drink and DM, kids. So how I'm saving this blunder uh, is the dwarves in the party. They, uh, you know, it's another fairy tale, and they are they're excited to actually to look at this because they're like, well, if this is true, then there's all whole sorts of other dwarven mythology that we could we could look at. So what I'm going to actually do is this city is going to be a floating city, and you're going to get to it via the Heaven's Gate. No, uh, no connotations around that name at all, right? Like it, that's totally totally open. But the thing is, it's going to be on the sixth level of a mega dungeon. So this is going to how I'm going to introduce the mega dungeon in my campaign, uh, and it's not going to be the entire focus. It's just going to be there if they want to explore, and this is going to give them a reason to explore it. Now, this is going to be a pretty big project, so this is going to be a multiple part video, uh, and I'm definitely not going to do it all at once. I'm going to design uh, floors, you know, one and two. They probably even just floor one because I doubt they'll get through it all. But yeah, it's going to be fun. So let's get going. So to start off here, uh, I'll talk about the the theme of this uh, mega dungeon. It's going to I'm going to take some some inspiration from uh, the classic mega dungeon, uh, Castle Greyhawk. This is going to be uh, Castle Black Falcon, and what we're going to do is the mega dungeon is going to be below the ruins. So first we need to start with the outside. So my my moon runes here. Uh, I promise those do that does say Castle Black Falcon. <laughs> All right. So uh, what do we need for a castle? So we could say it has a like a road leading up to it, be about 20, 20 feet wide. That should be fine, and then it can lead into the castle. I'm, I'm imagining this being like uh, like watchtowers, or whatever. Good enough. It's kind of kind of janky, but whatever. So on the side here, we're gonna have some we're gonna have some pillars. Uh, these are we're gonna use the usual 10 feet squares. We'll have these spaced out here. And there's going to be like a like a canopy over it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what those things are called. I, I guess canopy. Yeah, like a stone slab sitting above it to protect from rain. At the end here, we'll start some stairs, kind of like a little raised platform here. Then the doors are going to have big old double doors. So I'm going to fill in the rest of these columns. All right. So we have this. Now we still have a bunch of space over here. We could have have some like bushes. We'll have. Uh, statue out here. This is all to give uh, give things stuff to hide in and behind. We'll have a statue here. I'll just put an S there for statue. We'll have uh, we'll have some buildings over here. Be like uh, be like servants' quarters. Very simple. Sir. Have a big fountain. Very big fountain. Yeah, this this should be like forty foot long fountain. This thing's gonna be humongous. Ooh, and what what we'll do? This could be our first. Uh, this could be our first secret entrance in case the party, you know, investigates and they don't want to go in the front door over here. The party will probably try to sneak back here. So we'll put more bushes. A little smaller than the other one. Do symbol for, like, windows. I'm just going to put a W. That symbol, that's the door symbol. Uh, <laughs> do this. We'll have door. This is bubble door. <laughs> bubble door is my favorite Harry Potter character. Harry Potter character. <laughs> Big windows here. Slide in. All right. So inside, I I really like the kind of setups to where like the door leads in. And there's just this big, big old staircase. So this is where we're, this is going to split off into two different maps. So we're going to have the upstairs here. And we'll have the stuff leading into here. But up here, we'll have like a living room, fireplace. That uh, <laughs> just looks like another bush. Well, this section here be kind of like the uh, the royal uh, the royal sector. So this is where the owners of the castle are going to live, and they're going to have their own little sectioned off portion here. Bedroom, like an office or something. Of course, the royal dining room is going to be uh, in this sector because we'll say the king's kind of a recluse, so he likes to stay in his his little walled off area here. Yeah, we could have the uh, the first living room. We can have. This door can lead to the kitchen, and this could be the regular dining room. Oh, it's a 40 foot long table. <laughs> a lot of a lot of people here. Very wide open. I don't want to be spending too much time in here. Uh, probably. 
a bunch of smaller tables around. Lesser, lesser nobles and family members. Honestly, this can go to the barracks. Or not the... This can lead to the, like, petty... Not petty officers, like the lieutenants and stuff like that. And this is where we're going to put the entrance to the mega dungeon because it's going to uh, feed off of the, the regular dungeon. So not, not the barracks, like the... Man, I don't know, like, offices plus goes to barracks. Uh, we'll, we'll work that out on the next map. Right, so we've got 14 rooms here. Uh, now these all, since this is a mega dungeon, uh, at least the beginnings of one, not every room has to have something. Uh, the empty rooms are important for the party to rest in, stake up, and stuff like that. So now that we've got the map drawn, let's head over and key out this first portion. All right, we've got our document open here, and uh, I've got the, the usual setup. So let's go ahead and start this off. So I know outside here, I want there to be a goblin layer into where the servants used to live. So they're going to be kind of the sentries of, uh, of this. And so uh, we have the BFRPG rulebook open here, and we are going to see what a layer is. It looks like a layer is 6D10 goblins. That is a shit ton of goblins. If you watch my dice probability video, <laughs> you would know that that's an average of like... 20 times 6, uh, that's like 120 goblins or some shit on average. So far, uh, 3d6, we're at, or sorry, 3d10, we're at 19 already. Alright, a, a 30 goblin nest, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Pretty decent size. So, not all the goblins are going to be in the nest here. Uh, they ha they look like they, they appear 2d4. So we're going to have a few uh, running around out here, maybe hiding behind the statue in this... Uh, uh, this mountain here. We'll have a few uh, hiding, hiding right, right here, ready to alert the nest. Let's go ahead and roll for those. So seven goblins are going to be behind, hiding behind the pillars here. Four goblins uh, hiding behind the statue. So that alone, that uh, that brings down this layer from 30 uh, to 19. The goblin is going to have 19 goblins in it. And but goblins, do goblins have extra guys here? Uh, so one out of eight goblins is a warrior. So we'll have one warrior leading these four here. And I'll, uh, I'll clean this up off camera because that's kind of boring to watch. In a lair, one of 15 is a chieftain. And so out of eight, uh, so there should be two, two warriors. However, we also don't want, we kind of need to spread these out too. Like maybe the goblins will take the front over here. So three, we'll have another uh, 1d4 or 2d4 goblins sitting around. Four, uh, we'll have one of the cheat. Well, sorry, one of the warriors, and then one, three, and another four goblins. Actually, we're going to give these guys the lings because they're going to they're going <laughs> they're going to like you know throw rocks at, at players as they come as they come by. So here we have another eight. We have another nine goblins, uh, eight regular. So we're down to eight in this nest here, and. There's different kinds of goblins uh, that you can use. I, since there's orcs here, I really like playing goblins as being like uh, being super lazy when they're with orcs, and the orcs have to beat them to get them to do shit. So the goblins are going to be lazy and only take up three and four. Now we'll leave five and six. Uh, we'll see if there's anything else interesting we could throw in here. But we're definitely going to leave six blank to give them us a, a room of respite. Is that the word? I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid. <laughs> I mispronounce words all the time. However, we can have them, uh, five, the door is going to be trapped, and we're going, what kind of, what kind of traps would a goblin have? Something, uh, something pretty, I feel like something pretty primitive, maybe, uh, oh, like a spear trap. We'll have the, uh, as soon as you open this door, like as you push it inward, it's going to pop open some spears and try to skewer the guy in front. Spears do 1d8 in this game, I believe. What, uh, what could we what could we put here? I'm trying to stick to like uh, level or hit die one monsters for the uh, for the top here. Oh, we could do a, we could do a giant rattlesnake. Then five, it's been uh, that's why they trapped it. <laughs> He's been you know just roaming around the kitchen, trying to uh, you know staying alive. Maybe he could have been the uh, the owners of the castle's uh, pet. Which we'll expand on the owner of this castle and why it's here uh, later on. We're just focused on mechanics right now. Uh, this guy does have poison. Um, I use alternative poison rules, so it's not uh, save or die for my game, but it is still pretty brutal. Man, there's a lot of rooms here that I didn't, I didn't realize. There's some flavor text here uh, later on. 
So I think upstairs is going to be like where all the personnel live. Uh, uh, let's see, what commander? Yeah, well, uh, what will we call the guy? I already said he would be a recluse, and he would have to do something badass in order to get a castle in my mind. Uh, so commander, commander Jasper McLeod, the Ripper of Red Mountain. So I don't have anything about Red Mountain uh, yet. But uh, that's the cool thing about building worlds as your players go through them, because you can build from the ground up instead of the top down. So they could see this kind of thing, and they'll be like, oh, well, there's more to this than, you know, than we thought there would be. Uh, unless you're my players and you know me, and you're like, this guy's just pulling stuff out of his ass <laughs> that we might learn about later. <laughs> okay, so we've got a lot of stuff going on here, and now we need to do, uh, we need to do treasure and flavor text. So these goblins, they have a treasure type C in their lair. And they have R E. So in the interest of time, in the interest of time, I'm going to roll on C twice and then distribute that. Right, first off, we got 130 silver pieces. Second roll, got, got a little bit more here. Got some gems, 1500 copper and 1400 silver. And this electrum, I'm just going to cut in half and turn to gold. So two, we'll say uh, we'll say 600 in gems. We'll say treasure wise, uh, five. So five doesn't have any, or uh, giant rattlesnakes don't have any treasure on them. Or we could say they might find some, uh, we'll say they can find some like barrels of wine. They won't have to worry about water uh, then. We'll say 1d4 barrels of wine is left over. One barrel of wine. And uh, we'll say there's still some like hard bread and cheese. Uh, we'll, we'll just call it rations. We'll say, you know, ration-y food. There's not going to be anything in here. Uh... Just some rotting, some old rotting uh, furniture, or broken furniture, rather. Rotting, broken. Uh, the guard's captain's room. Uh, they're going to find some old chainmail and a spear. No, 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 no a sp actually, yeah, a spear. We'll, we'll say this is, they're, they're a pole arm kind of guy. Treasure's room. Uh, we'll find a sack with, you know, 100 GP. And we'll say uh, the castle ledger is in here. Watchtowers, you know, there's, there's going to have some shields, helmets, three shields, six helmets, eleven. It's going to be abandoned. Not going to have anything. Going to have uh, letters detailing reclusiveness, detailing reclusiveness, uh, bad diplomacy. So I'm thinking this is going to be something like they're going to have letters of uh, you know people being like. You know, come on, McLeod, you need to leave your castle. And he's like, no, fuck you. I'm, I'm staying here. I saw some shit at Red Mountain. Stuff like that. You know, that would be more, this would be more in the office. Now that I think about it. What, what would be in his bedroom? Uh, we'll say some. We'll say his great sword will be in here. And we'll say that, uh, we'll say there's some history books. Dining room. Gonna have, uh, a week, week's worth of rations. And I was thinking that if the goblins, if they're, you know, met in their lair, then they could always try to retreat, you know, into the manor, uh, since they know it a little bit more, or into the castle, sorry. And uh, I think that will about do it for today. Um, this is what I'm going to run tonight, and then next week we will uh, we'll key out the other floor that I drew, and we'll go, f and, you know, we'll keep this going as long as my uh, players are interested. They may, they may go do some other stuff, uh, so at some point the Mega Dungeon may put, be put on hold. While they do other things, uh, that's also fine. I'll you know I'll put the stuff in the playlist as it as it grows. But yes, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and uh, you know have a good time. Happy gaming. See ya.